The 2005 Fantastic Four movie was directed by Tim Story, starring Ewan Griffith, Jessica Alba, Michael Chiklis and Captain America. Today I'd like to look at this scene where the Thing causes a pile-up on the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm Kruger Bear, host of Too Many Movies, and this is my one excruciating scene. When I was a cub in the 80s, geek culture was a male-dominated space. Female fans of comic books were rare as rocking horse manure. The comics themselves did little to attract a female fan base in the way they portrayed their characters. They tended to be tokenistic and often hypersexualized. This began to change with Chris Claremont's run on the X-Men. He has said that whenever he sat down to create a character, he would always say first, you know, is there any reason that this character can't be female? Every team had a female character who was the girl. Never the woman, always the girl. I figured, why can't we have more exciting people? Which brings us to the Fantastic Four. The Thing had left the team at the end of the Secret Wars series, opting to remain on a planet created by the godlike entity the Beyonder, where he was able to control his powers. She-Hulk filled the vacancy left by him, bringing gender balance to the team. In issue 280 of the Fantastic Four, published in July 1985, Sue Richards comes under the influence of the supervillain, the Psycho Man. Using technology, the Psycho Man has the ability to manipulate his victims' emotions, causing them to feel intense fear, hatred or self-doubt. The Psycho Man manipulates the Invisible Girl into attacking and nearly killing her own teammates. In issue 283, he tortures Sue with visions of her teammates' deaths that she is unable to prevent. On both occasions, she is rescued by her husband, Reed Richards. The book ends by teasing the death of the Invisible Girl. And so in the Invisible Girl's final appearance in issue 284, the Psycho Man causes such self-doubt in Reed that he is unable to function as a leader. Sue gets the upper hand on the Psycho Man, wresting the control box from him and tables the turns on him. With the torture she was put through, Sue was forced to examine herself and makes the decision that the girl she once was has died at the hands of the Psycho Man and she is now the Invisible Woman. That was in 1985. Having previously battered away criticisms of her name, not only had Sue grown up, but Marvel had as well, and made the first steps towards a more progressive attitude towards their female characters. So 20 years later, when the Fantastic Four movie came out, can we expect to see an even more progressive growth in the character? Can we f The essence of storytelling is that there is a protagonist with a goal and an antagonist with an opposing goal. Story comes out of the resolution of this conflict. So what is Sue's goal in this movie? She wants to be with Reed. That's it. That's her goal. She wants a man. But Doom wants Sue to be with him instead. What are his compelling reasons for wanting the Invisible Woman? Why, Sue? You could have any other woman in the world. But that's why. Because I could have any other woman. Yeah, great character motivation there, movie. So, how will Sue overcome the powerful antagonist? By standing him up. So with that conflict resolved by minute 25, all that remains is for Sue to get her man. So, how will she prove herself to be the equal of the world's smartest man? How about sashaying around in a series of low-cut tops. Apparently, Wardrobe couldn't find any clothes that button past her solar plexus. And what is it she wants from Reed? Is it the love and support of a brave, intelligent man? Wow. Fantastic. Material made from self-regulating, unstable molecules. No, she wants him to stare at her jugs. In an interview with Elle magazine, Jessica Alba said that on the set of the sequel movie, the director had asked her to look prettier when she cried. And I think that tells you all you need to know about his commitment to crafting great story and character. The most excruciating example of this is the scene on the Brooklyn Bridge. Ben Grimm has just transformed into the Thing. Unlike the others, he's not able to turn his powers off. Rejected by his girlfriend, he goes to the Brooklyn Bridge for some reason. Now we've all at some point fantasised about having superpowers. What I love about Marvel Comics is that, as well as being a power fantasy, they often portray the superpowers as a curse. The Thing, for example, is incredibly strong and virtually invulnerable, but at the cost of spending his life being treated like a monster. 
Director Tim Story explores the depths of this contradiction by turning it into a joke. Oh look, a bird done a poop on him. That's hilarious, because poop is funny. And you know what's funnier than poop? Suicide. The Thing tries to talk the jumper down with hilarious consequences, causing a massive pile-up and risking the lives of hundreds of people. The rest of the Fantastic Four just happened to be on the bridge at the time, but the cops managed to teleport in quicker. In order to get past the cops, Sue turns invisible, and even though she's able to extend her power to make other people or objects invisible, she has to take her clothes off for some reason. And when she gets down to her smalls, suddenly she loses her powers. Why? Why is this necessary to the story? How does this advance the plot or give us important character development? Lucky for us, today is the day she's wearing her Victoria's Secret underwear. Good job it isn't Big Knicker Day. Luckily she hadn't fallen to the Communists that week. Oh, oh no Kruger, she had to do that to get past the cops. Well if she wanted to get past the cops, why didn't she just sneak around the back of the ambulance with the other two? Now, don't get me wrong, this is Jessica Alba we're talking about. She's an 11. And as evolved a bear as I like to think I am, of course, I can get my cheapies from an early nude Jessica Alba. But this, this is not a movie. This is a GQ cover. Well done, Tim Story. You killed the character of the Invisible Woman, and you made her the Invisible Girl again, you douche canoe. That's the Invisible Girl. What about girl? your leader? I've been Kruger Bear. That was my excruciating scene. This whole chuffing movie's excruciating. I'm out. F this piece of cool movie. Made my piss boil. Thanks for making me watch it again, Phil Mentor, you jerk. The movie stinks more than a pile of dead fannies. Like, comment and subscribe.